I don't trust emus. I mean, look at them. Why would you trust that? Oh god, they're in the petting area. This one over there, he's looking at me. Oh, he's coming over. Oh god, there's another one. They're teaming up. Oh god. They're coming over here. They don't look happy. They don't look happy at all. Oh god. Hey buddy. You make me extremely nervous. Look at you with your cold, dark eyes. trust. What's up, buddy? Just gonna go over That guy. No? Food? No? Okay. Good llama. You don't even have any red pajamas on.
so lazy. <laughs> Look at those claws! And that sexy pose. What a sexy pose. me nervous. Nope, oh, it's going around behind me. What are you looking at? Another? Alright. Hey! Please don't spit at me. No? Not gonna hurt you. There you go. Want some more? Just a little bit. And sexy pose. Chandler. Want some? Want some food? There you go. Hi. Oh, here comes the herd. You haven't quite gotten there yet, have you? There you go. Just because you look so expectant, I got a handful for you as well. What? What is it? 
What is it? <laughs> oh, they're eating my hand. And I'll wipe the slobber off on your head. You can't eat that. I call this one Reflections of a Roo. Poetic, I think. Yeah, scratch it. Scratch it. Some more of those parrots. Fast bugger. Hi. <laughs> it's that's what they do. That's mm -hmm. quite usual. I mean, if you want to protect your camera, that's fair enough. You have to say if it's if it's too much for you. No, that's uh, fine. For them, this is a this is a sign of respect and affection and acceptance. So you see our dingoes, they really are used to people coming up to them, mm -hmm. strangers. And I have to say, it's not always like that, you know, sometimes they just walk away. Okay. I know they're not dogs, but dogs do tend to, to like me more a little, uh, than other animals, so. Yeah. So say your question again. So basically, I was just wondering if if they were more trusting of humans than other animals and that's why they were hunted or just because they were like like uh, coyotes in the United States. Mm -hmm. They were hunted because basically they were eating people's chickens and they were um, they were uh, you know basically causing problems for farmers. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if that's why they were hunted or just yes. because they were they were more easy. Okay. No, no actually not. I mean um, there is definitely a theory or a pretty you know, sure assumption that, I mean, they've been here for at least 10,000 years. Mm -hmm. There have been case drawings found with dingoes on them. So there is an assumption that the Aborigines have had a relationship with dingoes uh, for a very long time. I mean, now even the Aborigines are not uh, able to live their natural life anymore. Right. There's not that many communities that are autonomous left, unfortunately. But they used to be part of their life. Life's not like a dog, maybe. I'd rather hunting partners or something, probably. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not, we don't really know exactly. Right. Uh, but they definitely had a respect for the dingoes, and the dingoes respected them. So there must have been some kind of relationship, but not in the sense that they were tamed as a species. Gotcha. Okay. okay like, like we would do with dogs now. No, I think the, the problem with the dingoes and the fact that they're hunted, okay, that's, no, that's just the thing. Okay. Um, that has a few reasons. Um, yeah, the first reason being that they are a predator, and obviously they will hunt, and they will hunt sheep, mm -hmm. they will hunt chickens, they will hunt small uh, animals. So they'll hunt sheep okay. as well, okay, just they'll like they'll hunt sheep, okay. yeah. Um, obviously, if like uh, um, human beings move into an area that is the wild, it's wild and, and uncultivated at this point, putting hundreds, thousands of sheep in a space that before was an area where dingoes took care of the natural balance right. of the ecosystem, there is going to be some kind of follow-up and some kind of repercussions of that. It's, it's logical. Um, and yeah, of course, some, some livestock definitely got killed. I mean, how much exactly and if that warranted the total, total extinction, mm -hmm. this is a big question. You know, I mean, there's different things, different ways to deal with that kind of problem. Um, so, so what is that, that that and then you know more recently uh, and obviously also that was at a time when um, uh, the ecosystem as a whole and the necessity for balance within it was maybe not quite understood by people yet or even thought of mm -hmm. at all so they see an animal that kills a sheep 
even if it's just one out of hundreds. They'll right. kill it. They'll kill the animals and say, okay, they're our enemies. Let's go kill them all. But then you have everybody doing that, and that's what... You have everybody doing that. And not only that, it's, it's what, what else happened then, you know. In the long run, you know, it really, really turned out to be quite catastrophic. Um, you know, other animals were brought into the country. Foxes were brought into the country. Cats mm -hmm. that went feral were brought into the country. Um, and other animals too, of course, but especially those small predator animals that took over. They did, were not really part of the natural ec ecosystem. You can't really blame the animals themselves either, obviously. Right. But they, you know, they multiply, they breed, they breed out of control because all of a the sudden they don't have an apex predator dealing with them, mm -hmm. right? The apex predator who before, when the area was... Kept their numbers down. Untouched, cut the yeah. numbers down kept everything, even the, the, the native animals, especially the native species, like kangaroos, wallabies, small animals, so that everything would be in balance and as, as the only apex predator in the country. The dingoes have it instinctually in them, uh, instinctively in them, mm -hmm. to, to um, go for the weak ones, the old ones, and to always keep the, keep the thin numbers. It's not that they're greedy to just splurge in meat. They can go without meat for quite a long time. Uh, but if it is the season for them to go, or, or the time and the circumstance for them to go, and make sure that everything comes into its right balance, their, their, their instinct will tell them what to do, who to hunt, mm -hmm. and who to, who to kill for their prey. And, and that, in turn, um, has a chain reaction downwards um, to smaller animals, to plant life. Right. In insects, everything gets affected by that. So them, having been here for thousands of years, playing that role, kept everything in balance. Okay, all of a sudden the dingo is not here, everything goes out of balance. So how many are left? I know there's breeding programs to, to bring them back, but how many are left yeah, in the wild? Yeah, not as much as we would like to. You know, unfortunately, like in most of Australia, they're still not protected. Mm -hmm. And the governments, the, the state governments still haven't been... Really why is that? There's more and more organizations working for that now and trying to educate people and, and starting their own initiatives, which are usually dependent on, on donations. Mm -hmm. and they're not state-funded. Right. Um, to, to have breeding programs to make sure that the, the pure dingo breed is not extinct because also one of the problems that happens is that once you have mixed breeds, the behavior changes. Right. And all of a sudden, you have problems that you wouldn't have with a, with a purebred thing. Are they mating with uh, domesticated dogs, or is it more... With feral dogs that have gone wild that were actually dogs. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, that happens. You know, like it would actually regulate itself if you would just leave dingo in the wild, dingoes in the wild, they would actually breed that, that mixed breed right. out again over time instinctively and it would be okay and they it's probably would you have to kill off now, now the mixed breeds or so it, yeah. it would actually happen quite automatically and any of those feral the feral mixes would would uh or the, sorry the feral dogs would uh, end up uh, they'd probably hunt them as well correct uh the smaller ones maybe yeah. yeah yeah but not i mean they don't really go for, for well, although i've seen videos you know where they they hunt wild pigs, mm -hmm. you know, and they're quite... Uh, quite That's a big. challenge. <laughs> it is a challenge, yeah.